Hi, Hildron here from the CC, and today I'm going to be doing a Windows 8 developer preview demo for you guys. We have had some blog posts about this stuff. We'll have a CC Cast episode covering the live event uploaded within the next week or so. And we have our live show coming up from the day of this post. Actually, on the day of this post. So, that will be cool. We'll talk about all the Windows 8 stuff live and the build conference. And a lot of great things. So right now I'd like to show you some of the changes in case you're not aware of them. Because some people don't really fully understand what Microsoft is doing with Windows 8. And it's getting some hate. And I'd like to bust those little myths right now. Uh, show you what I like, what I despise, and what I think they should change a little bit. Okay, so here we have Windows 8 Developer Preview running on a MacBook Pro here. Surprisingly, well not completely because there's still Windows 7 compatibility. Uh, the Apple Bootcamp drivers actually worked very well with this computer. Um, just about every function works with the bootcamp drivers, especially with the graphics, it works great. The only thing that really doesn't work is the set of special keys up here, so like F1 and F2 won't change the brightness, they'll just be treated as normal function keys. But you can still control the brightness from the control panel in the system tray. So if you want to install Windows 8 on your Mac, no worries, the bootcamp drivers work great except for the keys like I said. Okay, so this is the lock screen. To unlock the system, just drag up, like on Windows Phone 7, and here is the start screen. A very common misconception is that this is what the whole operating system looks like. Not true one bit. This is simply just the base layer of the user interface. The desktop is like a layer on top of Metro. Metro is at the bottom of everything. It's basically the system. The desktop is just another shell. So here I've got some real-time information like stocks. This one is Apple stock specifically. And here I have weather. And I can actually just click the tile. And it brings me to uh, the weather for Cupertino, California with a video background showing me the weather and kind of what it looks like with the video simulation there. So to get back, I basically just press the Windows key. On a Mac, it's obviously Command. So I just press that. And you're back to your last screen. So in addition to real-time information and the desktop there, you can also have your applications such as Internet Explorer, Control Panel. These are Metro apps, and Win32 apps are just these normal icons here. For example, uh, Command Prompt. I click that, it brings me to the desktop. Boom, Command Prompt is open. And while we're at it, I'm just going to quit Skype there. So that shows that the right-click works, that driver still works. I say, do you want to quit? So Command Prompt works fine. Let's open up some more things from the taskbar here. We'll open up an Explorer window. We'll open up um, Control Panel. We'll open up some other Explorer windows too, because I want to make a point here. So we have the taskbar kind of full here, and as you can see, this is the new Start button. I think it looks kind of stupid because it's a gray background. It doesn't blend in with the taskbar. That I really think they should change. And also another thing is they killed the Start menu. So some people, probably most people, will hate that. When you click it, you don't get the start menu, you get the start screen. So some people will probably miss that convenience of the start menu. They might add that into a later version, at least I hope they do, because this could get annoying, and a lot of people don't really like the whole Metro concept on desktop and laptop computers, at least ones that I've talked to. For tablets, this is great. Okay, so what? I, well, the point I wanted to make here was, when you're in full screen here in the Metro interface... You can, now that we were just at the desktop and we went into Metro, we can press the Windows key and go right back to the desktop. Press the Windows key again, go back into Metro. But, you can also do Alt-Tab from within Metro, go between your Windows, and even go between your full-screen Metro apps and your desktop. So I can go in between all of these, just with Alt-Tab. And with Win-Tab, I can go in between the screens. So instead of the Windows with Alt-Tab, I can go in between the screens. So let's say I'm in control panel here, I want to get back to my weather app. That simple. And um, to change things in certain apps, there are gestures for this on touch screens, but since I'm on a laptop, I'm just going to use the point and click features. If you just move your arrow to the top and right click, or the bottom in some cases, you get the app bar, which lets you do certain things like add cities to this weather app, for example. In addition, going down here opens up the charms menu. See, this is not really the start menu, because start is actually a separate entity. It is this screen. So going back to this, the charms menu basically is a set of changing settings for each application. Changing menus and everything. So if I go to this and hit settings for example, 
I get weather settings, and I get some basic system settings like network, volume, power. So that's what the charms menu is for. It's for ever so changing applications, like for sharing, for example. You can share, for instance, a screenshot of, of the weather, because weather doesn't have any social networking features, but by default, Windows will send a screenshot over your social networking choice. And I, and I, I think there are some built-in applications for social networking, but when you add your own, you can obviously get them right from this list. So that's the charms menu there, basically. And um, even on the desktop, I think, yeah, even if I press Win-D inside Metro, it will still hide everything. Even on the desktop here, you get the charms menu. So, for instance, if you click settings, you get settings here for the desktop, nothing really there, so you just use these little icons down here. And if I press Win-D again, actually, that doesn't do anything, so ignore that. So I can open all these back up, and then I can close these. And one thing I do like, though, is that all the titles are centered in the windows. I'm kind of used to that because I've been using the Mac OS for so long. Um, the buttons do look a little bit different, and the windows are actually, like, squares now. They're not rounded corners. They're, like, actually, like, panes of glass, and I think that fits the arrow theme really well. And as you can see here, here is the ribbon inside the Explorer, so it, on smaller screens it's not really good because I think it's kind of oversized. But you can go through tabs and get settings like Format, Cleanup, Optimize, like for a disk, for instance. Uh, my disk is still labeled Windows 7. That's actually pretty funny. We'll change that to Windows 8 and continue. Yes. All right, so now my disk drive is named Windows 8. Great. And, of course, you can press the File menu. Just like in other ribbon applications, you can get certain menus up here. And you can add your own little shortcuts for toolbar items into the bar up there. Okay, so let's close that. Um, back into Metro now. Basically, I showed you some Win32 things and these real-time tiles over here. What you can do is open up a Metro app, like Control Panel, for instance, and you can change settings from here, like your background picture or your your wallpaper. And um, see, now this is just another thing that shows the bootcamp drivers work with scrolling even on this trackpad, so it's pretty nice. Uh, manage uh, users, wireless, notifications, uh, general settings. I think there's another setting in here. Yes, refresh and restart your PC. You can, like, set your PC back to certain default settings with that. And um, if you just go down to the bottom here and click more settings, that will bring you to the desktop control panel where you can do whatever you want, really. I mean, there's all these programs throughout the system. Um, one thing in particular here is... Derp, derp, derp. Where is it? File history. This is like a built-in backup program. So you can use that via the control panel. And back into Metro, I will show something like Internet Explorer here. That's um, just showing this in full screen here. This is what IE looks like. You can have frequent websites here, and you can even pin websites. So here's a frequent one. If I um, just click that, I can just go right to it. And it's loading down there, as you can see, with the loading bar. And I can also get to multiple tabs up here. And once this is loaded, what I can do is go down to the app bar and press the pin button. And I could pin this to uh, the home page in IE, which I showed you was that one empty column there. Or I can pin to start. And when I pin to start, this is what it will do. Uh, right here. Um, oh, excuse me. That home button was actually not the button to pin it to the IE screen. It was a button to change the text that was just labeled home. Sorry, I never did that before, so I was just checking it out. So now I got this bookmark right here, and I can uh, right-click and unpin this if I'd like to. And I can go back just into IE. So yeah, when you click pin, the home button doesn't actually pin it to the home screen it, um, in the app. It actually just, um, that's just text that I can change whatever. So I can rename it and then pin to start. All right. So, oh yeah, also if you notice when you open up the charms menu, you do get date and time and etc. So I can use this just as normal in full screen, but I can still get to other screens. Like I can go back to my desktop and actually do something else. Uh, currently with IE10 and other Metro-based apps, I don't think if you're using the desktop version, you can switch between them. Like, for instance, let's say I have this page open. I don't think I can go, like for instance, go to google.com. And then, let's say I want to bring this into full screen for Metro. I don't think there's a way to do that yet. Uh, they might add that, because if I go back into IE 10 and Metro here, it's just the page it was last at. So that might need to be changed, because not everyone's going to be wanting to be using Metro apps. 
In addition, a way to switch between screens is you can just drag them in like this. Now see that? It like animated a little bit and then cut the full screen. Um, I think they should tweak that. I think they should make it zoom in. That would look a lot more professional, so they should probably fix that. But yeah, you can just drag in other screens from the side here and just switch between them easily. Um, you can also snap full screen apps if you'd like to do that. I can't on this screen because just it's too low resolution. It's only a 13 incher. So that's pretty nice. Uh, one more thing I think I'd like to show, just for like more of a power user thing, but it's really useful. Uh, this will also prove another point. Start the task manager. This is the new task manager. It's really organized, color-coded, based on resource and sensitivity. And the point I want to make here is that these are Metro apps. The status, suspended. When you close the app, not like quit it or anything, just get out of it. Like, now I'm in um, Internet Explorer, and it doesn't say suspended anymore. Now I'm out of it. Watch what happens. The percentage goes down all the way to zero, and it suspends the app. It still keeps it in memory but it doesn't use like any resources in the background. It's taken a while to get suspended, but it now is suspended and it's almost at 0%. So once I just get that suspended, I can go do whatever I want. There's app history here. I can look at a bunch of other apps that I've opened up and how long they've been open. Um, startup programs, you can manage them through this window now, which before I think you had to use MS config, you could not just use a simple preference like this. So, and you get a column view kind of like in the activity monitor in OS X. So, Windows 8 is looking pretty good so far. I mean, it's about time they added certain features like a GUI uh, startup disk selector. Um, the ability to set programs to open up and log in through an interface instead of using MS Config. Uh, the ability to mount ISOs on the desktop. I mean, things like that other systems have been doing for so long. Windows hasn't had any of those features yet until now, so it's kind of about time that they're not falling behind anymore and actually adding some of these things, but Microsoft isn't always too up to date with um, certain features like that, but at least they're doing some other innovations and doing things like this, which not everyone's too happy with on desktops and laptops, but tablets, I wouldn't mind using this one bit. Just, you know, tap these tiles. So I think that is pretty neat. Um... Locking the computer, simple. You can just click your icon here, and you can hit lock. Or same keyboard shortcut. They kept a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Windows L, and it's locked, and I can unlock it just like that. So that's a uh, pretty much it. There's a lot more, and um, I'm not going to be covering everything for obvious reasons. Uh, one thing some people might get a little bit lost about. Uh, where's the shutdown button? You may ask. Well, in the charms menu, excuse me, charms menu, if you open up settings, here is the power option. Sleep, shutdown, restart. So that is where you shut down the system. It's a few extra steps. I do think that's kind of silly, but you can do that from any screen. Just have the charms menu open, go to settings, and that's your your power options. Okay. So, and if I log off, I'll show you the log off or the login screen here. It's um Oh, actually, I think it's just going to log me back in because I'm the only user on the account. Oh, no, wait, the computer was locked, so now it's going to let me select, but it looked like it duplicated my name. <laughs> well, anyway, it works, so that's the, that's the main point I was trying to prove there. Okay, so that's about all I've got to show for now. Uh, this is definitely going to be updated in the future. And I can't show you all the features, I'm sorry, but... I can talk about some other ones quickly. I mean, when I was talking about the features they finally added, I listed a few, like ISO mounting, but it also has um, panoramic desktop support for um, multiple monitors. You can actually have a panoramic wallpaper stretched across them. You can have two taskbars, like on dual monitors, for instance. You can actually have a taskbar expand across dual monitors. So that's also pretty handy. Um, Hyper-V, I believe, is included. I don't think I have it for this since I downloaded the 32-bit version without all the dev tools. <clears throat> Because there are a lot of changes in the developer tools and a lot of new APIs with the WinRT platform for making Metro apps to run in full screen here. So that's about all I've got for now. Give it a shot yourself. Dev.windows.com. You can find the download link through there. Try it out. Like I said, there are quite a few stupid things that they did that I know some people are upset with that they probably should change. And there's some features that they just finally added that have been in other systems for quite a while. So that's kind of a pity on Microsoft's end, but... I don't hate Microsoft, I support them, I was really excited when this came out and I watched the build conference and it was pretty cool. We'll see how far this goes with the final release. So, 
Thank you for watching this. Use Windows 8. Let me know what you think. And I guess we'll go from there. I want to hear your opinions. All right. See you in the next video.